my show used to be on Thursday nights at 10 o'clock, so, you know, people coming in, you know, fairly late at night, whatever, might flip through the channels and find me speaking the same thing I'm saying today. And, um, I've had some decent discussions, but mostly with Christians. I haven't heard from pagans. I haven't heard from atheists. I haven't heard from agnostics. I haven't heard from Buddhists. I haven't heard from Hindus. I haven't heard from liberal Christians. I haven't heard from many conservative Christians. I mean, I'm really disappointed after 12 years that there haven't I haven't received more um, attempts to uh, communicate with me a particular viewpoint that you find engaging and life-changing um, to the point of either challenging me on my own view or just informing me that you are experiencing life you know, from a different perspective. All right. So I'm thinking there's a lot of fundamentalist Christians out there who might be watching this show, Closet Watchers, and you're probably thinking, well, why do you care so much about different points of view? If you've been, you know, I'm trying to read your mind, because you won't call me, so I'm trying to think of what possibly you could be thinking of that's keeping you from picking up the phone. Um, and like I said, you can call every month, second Monday of every month at 7.30 and talk to me directly on the air. Uh, by calling the uh, station, and I don't know what the number is, I'm sorry, I'm going to say, but they put it on, on the screen every second Monday of the month. You, you're not doing that, and you're not calling me on my cell phone, which I give out all the time, 203-605-9747. So I'm thinking, what could you possibly be thinking that's keeping you from contacting me and I can only come up with the likelihood that you think well, like I said to just engage with me is of the devil because somewhere in the Bible you know, you know in the gospel Jesus is uh, quoted as having said just shake the dust off your sandals you know, don't even participate with anyone who doesn't receive your word. Well, you haven't, you, you haven't called to give me your word. So you can't reject me as not receiving your word. You have to at least give me a chance. Or you're looking at some of Paul's writings where he um, uh, you know, has this position of excommunication of anyone who is, you know, calls themselves a Christian doesn't act like a Christian. They need to be um, ostracized, excommunicated, so that they get the message that they are rejected, and that somehow in this rejection they're going to you know, repent and come to the love of Jesus. That's where I differ with Paul. I really do. As much as I love Paul, and I think he is probably our best historical um, witness of the life and power of the person of Jesus Christ. I don't agree with him completely for the reason I just mentioned as well. But overall for his life as being a uh, initially a persecutor and killer and promoter of killing Christians, and then miraculously gets thrown off his horse, is blinded, becomes a Christian, and becomes the most eloquent defender and apologist for the doctrine of salvation through Jesus Christ in faith, is almost impossible to imagine that something like that would occur out of someone's, you know, father or 
superstitious notion or mishandling of generations of understanding of Judeo-Christian um, tradition. It's ridiculous. So I think Paul is our best example, I think, historically, if you just want to come at it from a scientific collecting data position. Paul is our best witness and uh, example of historical evidence of the lordship, resurrection, and veracity um, and integrity of the life of Jesus Christ. So I can say that in respect of who he is and not agree with everything he says. I mean, he said men shouldn't have long hair. That was a cultural statement. Women shouldn't speak in church. Another cultural statement. You know, um, and like I said, specific standards for who you're going to allow in your Christian community and specific reasons for kicking them out. Part of his understanding at the time. And those are minor, in my opinion, those are minor differences. You know, those differences I have with Paul don't in the least bit challenge my uh, understanding of who he is in the history of mankind or who Jesus is in the history of mankind. Those are just reflections of his culture and his, his upbringing, period. And that's why I can do the same with Paul as with Buddha, as with uh, understandings of um, Krishna, or Zoroaster, or Taoism, is because whatever people's experience is, and understanding is of engaging with cr Creator God, has to be respected. Why would you expect Taoists to have, like, a position on salvation? Jesus didn't make a, a major um, presentation or visitation to China. So why would I expect that from China or Japan? Or India. But to think that Creator God had no relationship with the people who lived their lives in self abnegation, denying themselves the ascendancy that their will and And desires to fulfill their uh, lust for pleasure was um, uh, disreputable because they didn't know Jesus? That's ridiculous. And Jesus came to the to the Mideast and his, for the most part, his influence went west. You know, there are some books and some documentation that show that either through himself before he turned 30, in those years between when he was 12 and 30, which are not spoken of uh, much in the Bible, that he you know, might have had an impact either through his own visitation to Eastern um, countries or through the missionary work of his apostles. Um, yeah, there was a connection there. There was an outreach there. But clearly, his biggest outreach went west. So why we would, we would assume that, you know, through osmosis, the entire Eastern culture for hundreds, thousands of years would somehow be uh, 
conversant with the words and life of Jesus is ridiculous. <laughs> and to then, and as a result, if there's no connection with Jesus, that any ideas that they had of God were um, barbaric, pagan, uninformed, false, superstitious, satanic, is ridiculous. 